Hi, welcome to our first truly technical lecture in our CSS course. It's about adding style to your pages. If you've come to this course with me from my HTML course, you know that I know that you can make general HTML files, but up till now, you may not have styled them at all. What I want you to know before we even begin styling and you start putting your own little twist on the pages is that the same HTML file may look different when viewed on different browsers. And there's a few reasons for that. First, some tags aren't supported in some browsers while they are in others. So if you've ever used the details tag, you can see that sometimes your page will have little arrows or different little uh, markings on them, and other times it won't. So that comes down to tags that are supported. But also, every single browser has its own different default style. And what that default style says is, this is how I want my H1 headings to look, or this is how much padding I want around my paragraphs. So if you go to the exact same page on different browsers, it may be hard to tell, but you'll see tiny little differences in how things are made. But in general, this default look is really plain. And most people I know, they don't want their pages to look plain. They want to put in some style. So let's begin looking at ways you can do this. One way to add style is to think about adding it directly into the tags. Now, as HTML evolved, we went from having tags that were distinctly about color and different centering and different things like that to saying, no, no, we don't want tags that have to do with style. We only want tags that have to do with content. And people said, OK, we, we can do that, but I want to make it pretty. So what, how they did this is they added style attributes. So in this case, I've taken an H1 tag, and I added the style attribute and simply said, color blue. And what this is going to do is it's going to make this particular H1 heading have blue font to it. So it's very simple. It's a nice way to kind of just go in and add simple styling to your page. However, this still kind of breaks our rule of wanting to separate content from style. Because if you want to change it to say red or green or something like that later, you're going to have to go in and change the tag because you have to change the attribute. So I really tried to go out of my way to not use this at all and instead get in the habit of doing things the right way. And the right way to style your pages is to use CSS. Cascading style sheets are basically a way for you to write rules that say how you want to style all the paragraphs or how you want to style all your headings or how you want to style some of your images. It's a really nice specific way that everyone can follow to make these styling choices. And the rules are set up like this. First, you have to put down your selector. And selector is just kind of a fancy way of saying what it is you want to style. In our case, we'll start off by just giving the selector different tag names, such as H1 or paragraph. Once you define which tag you want to style, you say which property it is you want to change. So we can look at things such as color, background color, how much space we put around it. We're going to cover all of those. But for right now, we're going to start off really simple and deal with colors. Then you have to give each property a value, saying which color you want it to be. So on one side, we have the very generic how we write a rule. And on the other, I've written a very specific rule that says, hey, whenever you see an H1 heading, I want you to make the font color blue. So we've done exactly what we did when we embedded using the style tag, but now it's very generic. And we're not talking about a specific heading. We're not talking about a specific tag. So when you write these rules, the syntax is very important. A lot of times when you write HTML, the browser is really nice to you. And if you forget to close a tag, it says, that's OK. I know what she wants me to do. And it'll go ahead and put the page up anyway. When you're doing CSS, if you're sloppy with what we call your syntax, you're going to get in trouble. So the brackets and the semicolons are very important. So let me show you again. When we go back here, you can see that I've got a beginning bracket and a closing bracket. And I've got this semicolon right at the end. You need to remember to include those. And one of the reasons I talk about this is that when you start writing your code, when you pick a good editor, and most editors are pretty good, such as Sublime or Text Wrangler, Text Edit, Notepad++, they will put colors in for you. So all of a sudden, if you're looking at your CSS rules and you're like, whoa, I kind of expected things to be different colors, but instead everything's white or everything's red, it kind of gives you this hint that you've messed up on your rule syntax. In the same line, I just kind of want to throw in here that when you're writing your rules, you can put comments in to kind of help you debug and help you explain to yourself what you're going. And this is how comments are done in CSS. You just do the forward slash star star slash again. 
So what happens if you want to do more than just one property? What if instead of saying just you want the color to be blue, you also want the background color to be yellow? Well, no problem. You can have as many property value combinations as you want. You just need to remember to separate them with semicolons. So in this case, again, I've set the color to blue and the background color to yellow. All right, so now that you know how to write a rule, how do we actually get them to work? Well, there's two ways. And the first way I'm going to tell you about is called using an internal style sheet. So as you can see over here in my code, I've got the basic template of our file. And inside the head tags, I've put this style tag in. That's where you're going to want to put your rules. They're defined right within that style. So now, inside the style tag, I've added the H1, the color blue, and I've ended my style tag. So what happens now is that when the browser opens your page, it gets to the head section. It says, oh, great, she wrote some rules. Let's see what she wants me to do. And it's going to know to go through your page and apply this rule to all the H1 tags. And if you have multiple rules, including paragraphs, images, things like that, it's going to know I want to apply this to all instances in the entire file. Okay? Now, you're going, there's a really good chance you're going to mess up because I do this 80% of the time when I'm developing in class. And what I do is I forget to close this style tag. And if you forget to close that style tag down at the bottom, well, actually your page may end up being blank. So don't freak out when you first start doing this if your, if your page is blank. It probably means you forgot to close the style tag. All right. So in st internal style sheets are really nice when you're just trying to style up one page. All right. And I often do it just so I can keep all my code in one file instead of going back and forth and back and forth. But imagine that you have a site where you're going to have 10, 20, 1,000 different pages and you want them all to have a very consistent look about them. You don't want to have to go in and say if you want to change a color, you don't want to have to go in and open every single one of those files so you can change the color to red or green. Instead, what you want to use is you want to use something called external style sheets. The way it works with an external style sheet is that you put your rules in a different file. So you open up a file, you're going to save it something such as like my style with a .css file extension. So now the browser knows, oh, everything in HTML, that's the content. Everything in .css, that's the layout. Now, when you make your external style sheets, it looks just like we just did in the internal, except for you don't use a style tag. Then, once you've put your rules in a separate file, all you need to do is add a link into the head section. So in this case, I've gone in, I've put my link, I need to let it know the relationship is that it's a style sheet, and you have to remember to put the file name. So once again, this is where it's going to be really important that you're naming things in ways that they make sense to you. Okay? You can link to as many different style sheets as you want. Most of the time, we start with one. So now that we've had that style sheet, every single file that links to it will all share that style sheet. So remember when I mentioned that you might have a site with 10, 20, 1,000 pages to it, and you decide to change that color from blue to red or green or something like that? This is great. All you need to do is open up style.css, change one line of code, and you now just change potentially thousands of pages. Okay. So let's talk for a second about this idea of cascading style sheets. What does it mean that we're cascading? Well, when the browser goes to make your page, the first thing it's going to look at is go, all right, maybe they're not telling me anything. How do I normally make H1 headings? How big do I make that font? So it'll have its own kind of default values. But then it goes and it looks and it says, oh, are there any external style sheets? Because if so, I'm going to overwrite my browser defaults and put in the rules that are in this external style sheet instead. Next, it's going to check for internal style, that style you have in the head section. Because in general, the browser thinks, hmm, maybe there's something really special about this particular page, and he or she wants me to do these rules instead. Finally, any of those inline styles where you use the attribute tag, those are going to have the highest precedence of all. So it can be really confusing because you might start writing up different rules, and you can't figure out why some are working and some aren't. This is where the cascading part comes in again. First, it looks at defaults then external, then internal, and then inline. Which is why, really, you want to avoid using any inline style because it pretty much nullifies all your styling rules. All right, so we know how those four go. But what if you have a selector and you've linked to two or three different style sheets and that same H1 has been defined to be blue and green and yellow but in different files? 
how does the browser know what to do? Well, how it works is that the rules from the most recent file have precedence. And what I mean by the most recent file, it means it goes up into the head section, it goes one, two, three, and it kind of looks at what order you listed them. And the last one you listed is the one that's going to have precedence. OK, well, what if you have a selector in the same file and you've written H1 multiple times? This can actually happen quite a bit, especially if you decide to go off and be part of a big development company. You may write some code, and then someone else comes in and writes some code. Or as I tell my undergrads, maybe you went out and had a really good time one night, and you came home and decided, I'm going to code. And you forget that you've already written some rules. Well, if that's the case, once again, the browser is going to look at the one it saw last. So in this case, I have two rules for H1. One where I set the color to blue, and I said, hey, I want you to use this Arial font family. And then later, there might be a whole bunch of stuff in here, it might be nothing. And I say, hey, I want you to use the font family times. How the browser is going to look at this is it's going to go down, do, 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 and say, I'm going to make all the font blue, and I'm going to go ahead and make the font family times. It's just always is going to use the last one it saw. Okay. So again, the most recent rule has precedence, whether it was inside your code or it came from different files. There is, however, one way to overwrite this. Suppose you're writing something and you know you want something to be that way. You don't care if anyone else overwrites it. You, you really want to make sure people aren't using inline style, different things like that. What you can use is you can use the important attribute right here. So in this case, I've got fat family, Arial, and I've got important right here. So even though later I decide to overwrite it with times, the browser is going to say, nope, I know that she really wanted me to use Arial, and it works out. So let's go ahead and look at an example of what I mean by all this precedence. I know just listening to me it can get a little overwhelming. So I've got a quick example showing you the different ways, and then we'll kind of wrap up this lecture. Right. So let's start off with using the style attribute. As you can see in here, I've written the code, and I've used the style attribute for this H1 heading and this one paragraph. So in this case, I want my H1 heading to be blue and my paragraph to be red. And what I really want to show you is that the only paragraph that was changed to red text or red font was the first one. The other one's still black. So the only way to style is if you go in and you change each and every tag to make it look the way you want it to. If I wanted all the paragraphs to be red, I'd have to go in there and put style equals, style equals. In this example, there's only two, but you can imagine how it'd get really annoying if you had a lot. All right. In our next example, we have an internal style. In this case, I've put in my style tag up at the top, and I've added rules for paragraphs and H1 headings, and it should handle both. So now, I've gotten rid. There's nothing in here anymore. My tag is all by itself. And if you look at the result, let's go over here. You can see that now, even though my HTML doesn't have any type of styling in it at all, both of the paragraphs are red over here, and so is the heading. The last example I had for you is I took these exact same rules and I put them off into an external style sheet. Again, there's no style tag here. It's just the rules themselves. And then I had to go back to the HTML file. And you can see right up here near the top, I have, hey, let's link to the style sheet I want. Now, I want to point this out very carefully to you. If you notice, I have CSS slash external style sheet. This means that my style sheet is in a special folder called CSS. Developers really stress that you do this because you want your code to be kind of organized into different parts. So again, in the same way, I now have a, a page that uses external style sheets and looks really good. So all this code is going to be available for you to look at it, but I want you to kind of play with it as much as you can. But I want to use this final example to help you kind of understand how the cascading works. So right here, I have my external style sheet. I'm going to go over here for just a second. Go to my, and I'm going to add one last thing. Sorry, this is going to be awkward. And I'm going to say, you know what? Instead, I want that font to be black again. And I end it. I'm going to show you what happens when you mess up really quickly. I'm going to save it. I'm going to reload my page. And everything disappeared. This was what I was talking about. You really want to make sure you include that style tag. Do it. Make sure you close it up. All right. So now, 
What I have going on here is my browser has its browser defaults, it has its ex external style sheet, and now it also has an internal one. So let's see what color it's going to be, if it's going to be blue or if it's going to be black. And as you can see, it's black. So as you start styling, it's going to be very important that you look at different ways for separating your content from your formatting, as well as looking at the different ways that you can do that form formatting. So one of the first things I want you to think about is how this idea of external and internal style sheets really plays into the separation of content from formatting. And at the same time, I want you to understand that we don't always follow every rule. In the beginning, we always have to start with really, really simple examples to kind of help you guys solidify what's going on with CSS. So I'm just going to end this now with a brief, brief demo from an example that they have at CSSZenGarden.com, because I think it really brings home the idea that CSS can be very powerful. So let's take a look. So at this site, CSS Zen Garden, they've actually done a really great job of showing all the different ways you can format an exact same file, but in different ways. So up here, if you take a look, you can see that this is one person's style sheet for decorating or styling this, this document. Now, without changing any of the HTML at all, someone else came in and said, hey, you know what, that's nice, but I'm going to style it this way. It looks completely different. It's the same exact HTML, but it looks completely different. In the same way, we've got this one right here. Same exact HTML, but you couldn't look any different because they've added some CSS and JavaScript to it that's different. So come on with me. We're going to code a lot in this course. We're going to be playing a lot with this course. You're going to be messing up a lot in this course. But I can't wait for you to develop something that really reflects how you want your page to look. Thanks.